What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this relatively quick video, I'll show you how to optimize or at least slightly improve Wu Chang Fallen Feathers. So as you probably know by now, this game is currently rated absolutely horrendously on Steam. And of course, whether you bought it there and are trying to get it optimized or at least improved within your two hour refund window, or you have it for free through having an existing Xbox a Game Pass subscription. In this video, I'll show you how to get a better performance as well. There's a lot to be desired. Of course, this is another other Unreal Engine 5 game that could do with a lot of optimization and tweaking. Just spawning in here with the default settings, things look terrible around my hair, and of course, performance-wise, nothing on my PC is working but this game. So let's quickly step over the politics of the whole situation, whether it deserves the hate it's currently getting or not, and let's just speak about making this game playable. If you're currently running a graphics card with 8 gigabytes of RAM or less, you're really going to struggle with this, especially especially if you have less. There is some optimization that we can do, but for the most part, you pretty much need a graphics card with at least eight gigs of VRAM. Otherwise, it's gonna be damn near unplayable for you because of FPS inconsistency, drops, and things like that, even if it does run properly. Immediately off the bat, I'll pause the game, head across to settings, which is these cubes up here, and we'll start with changing a few things here. First of all, under graphics settings here, I'll need to make sure that display mode is set to full screen for the best performance and of course experience, but if you're someone who tabs that a lot, borderless windowed is more than fine in most systems. This game is at least referred to a lot of times as running at 60 FPS at 1080p, so if you're struggling with a graphics card with less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you'll probably definitely need to use some kind of upscaling, which is probably on by default at this point in time. Next, VSync should definitely be turned off. If you currently have an FPS cap of 60 in game, you can crank this up to unlimited. And now we can actually see what we're supposed to be getting. So if I confirm my changes here and unpause, now we're starting at a solid 65-ish FPS bouncing around on a 3080 Ti at 2K running off completely stock default settings. The mouse is doing quite a bit of jumping. Obviously, I'll plug in a controller in a moment to play with that. And the hair is doing some weird things. There's weird things happening when I look around etc. We can do a lot better. If I head to graphic settings and scroll down here, overall quality by default is high for me, but if I crank this all the way down to the lowest possible, it does need a restart for some changes to take effect. But if I unpause, you can see we've jumped all the way up to 97 FPS, which is huge. There's still lots of weird things happening with my hair here and my character that really does look super funky, but performance is much, much better now, although just my character still looks a little bit weird. Motion blur, depth of field, your preference, advanced graphics settings. Here is where we can improve things greatly. First of all, don't use TSR, use either DLSS if you're running an NVIDIA GPU or FSR if you have anything else. TSR can look a bit better than FSR in some cases, depending on what your anti-aliasing is set to. But for the most part, FSR and DLSS is usually the best option. And of course, there's frame generation as an option here too, but I'd recommend leaving it off at least until we have everything optimized. And just like that, by changing from a TSR to DLSS, immediately my character's hair while looking around, things like that is a lot less weird. Things are more visually consistent. Even though we've dropped from 98-ish FPS to 75, it's much, much better now. Frame generation, I'll leave off for now. We may return in the future and see alias in quality. You'll notice that there's almost no performance difference between these and the higher you go, the more soft things look, especially with TSR. So if we set this up too high, things should look a little bit softer, less jagged edges and weird things like my hair and certain issues like that should be improved ever so slightly. For the most part, no performance difference. I'd recommend leaving this on high unless things seem a bit too flat and blurry, in which case set this to medium or low. Sharpening your preference, 2 to 3 works fine for me. Post processing has a very small FPS impact of around 1 to 2%, and the only jump is between low to medium, where you'll notice a lot more glare and things like that from the sun shining through the trees, etc. So, standing somewhere here with medium versus low, there's a small difference there, and visually, either you like the effects that you get and don't mind a 1 to 2 FPS difference, and have it either set to low for the ever so slight performance increase, otherwise high for a better looking game, at least in certain aspects, with very little performance impact. Then shadow quality, there's barely any difference between these options. Shadows are just a little bit more blocky and noticeably blocky on the low, but that's such an incredibly small detail that most people will overlook it entirely. Performance-wise, each step that you go up from low to medium to high to ultra 
will take around 2 to 3 FPS away from you, so for the most part, play on low and you'll be fine. Then effect quality. This one gives you a huge increase in performance and there's a couple of different options. If we have this set to low, it disables screen space reflections, so you'll notice that water looks a lot more flat, but with each step up, we get around a 5% performance cost. Medium re-enables screen space reflections, things like that, and should make the game feel a lot more alive, even if it does take away a little bit of your performance. Obviously, I'm not standing next to a river here or anything like that, so there's nothing changing too much performance-wise, but visually you should see a a big improvement, so for that reason I'd leave it on medium. Then view distance has basically no performance difference, but it does greatly affect pop-in, vegetation and things like that in front of you for the most part, leave this on high and you're fine. Then texture quality, this takes an already pretty hefty requirement of 8GB of VRAM and raises it even more. For the most part, if you have an 8GB card or less, leave this on low, there's not much you can do besides maybe playing around with anisotropic filtering, which you'd usually be able to do from a settings menu like this, but you'll need to do through the NVIDIA control panel, AMD equivalent and things like that that may result in slightly better looking textures without using any more vram if you're running on a better system with a bit more vram you can usually crank this up quite high and you'll see a big change in texture quality overall making the game feel a lot more alive with an incredibly small fps cost then vegetation quality while you'd expect this to add and remove vegetation for the most part having this set to low disables tree and bamboo sway and anything above this re-enables it each step of course does actually result in quite a bit of performance lost. For example, we were at, let's say, 60-ish FPS with it on low. If we crank it up on low, I'm getting a solid almost 70 FPS, 69, nice. Setting this to mid, we're getting 63. Too high, we're still at the same place, but obviously we don't have many trees and bamboo and things like that around us, so we'll quickly move across to one of them. And down here, the difference should be a lot more noticeable. There's some weird shimmer happening with the leaves, but if I lower vegetation quality to low, you see that the trees stop swaying as much, and that weird shimmering vanishes. But of course, looking around and moving it does bring it back. I'm pretty sure that's to do with the lower resolution and DLSS trying to catch up. Performance-wise, 69 with it low. And of course, on high, a lot more things are animated. DLSS is trying as hard as it can, and we've lost a bit of performance down to 61. For the most part, if you're playing with upscaling on a much more performant setting, then I'd definitely recommend vegetation quality on low just to stop some of that shimmering. Then volumetric fog. There's practically no performance difference or looks difference. Have this set as you please. For me, I'll leave this on low. Then global illumination is off on the lowest setting, but this does change how the world looks drastically. If we enable this, you'll see that we move from 69-ish FPS to 65, and the world should look a lot more bright. You should be able to see inside a lot better, and the change is super noticeable. Here's off all the way up to high. For the most part, I definitely recommend looks-wise having it on low just so you actually see what's going on indoors, even if it does come with a small performance cost or a bigger performance cost on lower performant GPUs. This mostly has to do with lumen, lighting, and things like that, all heavier elements of the UE5 engine. Just past that, ambient occlusion has to do with making dark shadows around other objects even darker, things like that. For the most part, we have two options, high and low. Low gives me 76 FPS and high is around the same place. There's basically no performance cost here. High is what I'd leave it on. And finally, reflection quality. This, as it says, may significantly impact game performance, has to do a little bit with ray tracing, things like that. Again, heavier elements. For the most part, you'll need to play with this on low, especially if you're on a lower and GPU, if not medium, if you have a slightly better one with a bit more performance to spare. This will make rivers and things like that look a lot better. And something you'll notice is that I changed it to medium and lighting changed drastically. This is simply because if I drop this down to low, it basically changes the lighting engine in this option, as well as global illumination are heavily, heavily linked. So if I raise this too high with global illumination on anything but off or low, then it looks a lot darker than GI off with reflections on medium. Here's GI high, for example, and GI high with reflections on low. If you're really struggling to see indoors and things like that, regardless of how the outside world looks, you'll likely need to have global illumination set to low if you like better reflections, 
or have reflections set to a higher option with GI set to off. For the most part, looks and performance wise, global illumination on low or anything but off with reflections on the lowest option is what I'll be sticking with in most cases. And with these simple changes, you should see at least a slight improvement in performance. But what about all the shimmering, especially to do with leaves and things like that as we look around? Well, this mostly has to do with upscaling. And that's over here, the oversampling resolution. While there isn't a balanced quality, etc. preset, you'll see while it's highlighted down here, the current level is balanced. If we set this all the way up to 68, it flicks over to quality, all the way up to 100%, which is DLAA. So we run the game at native resolution and just use DLSS for some better quality, 42 or 43 FPS running at native. So it absolutely needs some kind of upscaling. This is even after we've optimized our settings. But as you can see, there's no more weirdness happening with leaves. And of course, raising vegetation to medium animates them again. And there's no weirdness here running at native, but we are stuck at 40 FPS. So you'll need to play with some kind of upscaling. Scaling. If I set it to 68, which is the quality equivalent, things look okay. 59, which is balanced, you may notice some weirdness here, but things are still mostly okay. Down to performance, we'll notice a lot of weird shimmering and things like that left behind, all the way down to the lowest option, 25, which is just hilarious. For me, I'll play with vegetation set down to low, and I'll be running at the bottom end of balanced, which is roughly 59% on that resolution scale, and things look okay here. For the most part, the game is more than playable, and we've gained quite a bit of FPS. Obviously, though, I'm playing at 2K, so my slider is going to look quite a bit different to yours, as for the effects it has in-game. If you're playing at 2K or 4K, you're definitely going to notice a major difference there, both performance-wise and looks-wise. Play around with this option until you find something that works with you. Obviously, this game needs a huge amount of optimization. Running a 3080 Ti at 2K, I should definitely be getting more than 60 FPS without the need for DLSS or upscaling, as that's really a sad thing that we have to deal with, especially with modern UE titles where there's not a huge amount of optimization work done that really should be done. But that's a comment on the broader gaming industry for the most part. Yeah, take this as you will. If you want to play this game, this video should have hopefully helped you quite a bit. At least you know what to set your settings to now. That being said, will you even bother with this? Do let me know down below. And that's really that. Hopefully you found this video useful, if not interesting. Thank you for watching. My has been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.